Turn to the book of Revelation. Revelation chapter 21. Chapter 21. You know, this morning, I've heard it all this morning. Heaven, heaven, Jim sung the songs about heaven. Our destination is heaven. And to be honest, that's something that the Lord's laid upon the heart that we're going to look at today. It's the new heaven and the new air. Revelation chapter 21. We're going to read verses 1 down to verse 7. Give me an amen when you've got that. That's what the word of God says. It says, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there were no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven, from God prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people, and he will dwell with them, for they will be his people. And God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death, mourning, crying or pain. For the older things are passed away. He who is seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Then he said, write this down. For these words are trustworthy and true. He said to me in his door. I am the Alpha, I am the Omega, I am the beginning and the end, and to the thirsty I will give water without cost, from the spring of the water of life. Those who are victorious will inherit all this, and I will be their God, and they will be my children. Let's bow our heads and let's pray this morning. You know, we don't need to pray for God's word, it's a beautiful passage of scripture. But this morning, pray for yourself that, you know, God would speak to you this morning. Let's begin to pray, amen. Father, Lord God, I come before you this morning, my God. Lord, I'm just a man this morning, Lord. I can do nothing without you, my God. Lord, I need your spirit to lead and guide me, my God. Lord, it's your spirit, Lord, that ministers to people's life in this place today. Lord, it's you that changes people's lives, my Lord. Lord, I ask today, Lord, as, as this word is preached, my God, you would encourage, strengthen and build us up, my God. And minister to the areas of our life, Lord, where we need, my God. You know, Lord, as, as I go through this message, my God, Anything that's not of you, Lord, I ask, it doesn't stay in our mind, Lord. Yes. But, Lord, the things that are of you, the things that you want to speak into our heart today, then, Lord, implant it into our hearts and minds today, yes, Lord. Lord. Let us ponder upon it. Let us apply it to our lives today, Lord. Yes, Lord. Father God, I ask this in the mighty and precious name of Jesus. Lord yes. God's people say? Amen. Amen. You know, this morning, like I said, Jim was singing the songs. I could hear people when they were praying. Speaking about... Ever and then, if I could put a little title on this this morning, it would be knowing where our home truly is, where in, where we really belong this morning. You know, here the book of Revelation, it's um, the word means apocalypse. It means a divine mystery which is revealed. God, John has shown something here. He's on the island of Patmos. For those that don't know, John has been exiled to this this island, and this is the same John. That we read in our Bibles, in the Gospel of John, in the letters of 1, 2 and 3 and John, I'm, I'm sure we're all in agreement, it's the same John. And it was written in the first century. Doesn't matter what time it was written, people debate two dates, that doesn't matter. But it was written to seven churches in Asia Minor. And it was a revelation that came from Christ. You know, God sent an angel to John, when you read in chapter 1. And God, uh, through this angel... John is shown a vision, a vision of all the things that are going to take place in the last days. All the things that are going to come into play. John is shown these things of what will take place. He's shown these seven letters that will be distributed to the seven churches in Asia Minor at this time, which was Turkey. He's shown tribulation and John has shown all the things that will take place in tribulation, the things that will take place with God's wrath, the things that, you know, the thousand year millennium kingdom, the, where Satan will be bound and Satan's final outcome. And he's shown the judgments, he's shown the lake of fire, and most importantly, John has shown the new heaven and the new earth. Amen. 
that comes down out of heaven. And today that's where I feel the Lord led me after I've been seeking the Lord and asking the Lord what the Lord wanted me to share was on this this morning. And this is a message this morning to encourage us. It's not a message to beat anybody down, but it's to encourage us to know where we truly belong and where our home really is this morning. Amen. Evans mentioned in the Bible, in the King James Bible, 532 times. 55 times in the book of Revelation. So it's a very important thing. We know that all the way through the Bible, we know that is the believer's final destination. Heaven. That's where we all want to be, amen. And you know, no matter this morning, look, whatever we accumulate while upon this earth, the motors, the cars, the places, the money, what, what, whatever it is, what, whatever it is that we accumulate, this morning we need to understand it has not got a patch on whatever will be like. Amen. All the things that we accumulate will not compare to this place. Because the Bible describes it as a place where it will be walking on streets of gold. All the stones, all the precious jewels, they'll be surrounding us, they'll be all around us. All these things. And it's where me and you will be. It's where we will spend eternity and where we will spend glory with the Lord forever. So in verse 1, I'm going to go through the verses. And in verse 1, this is what John says. Then I saw a new heaven and a new air, for the first heaven and first earth had passed away, and there was no more any sin. You know, for the first 20 chapters, that um, John's sin and all the things that he has sinned, he's sinned so much terror, the wickedness, all that loose upon this earth, the tribulation, God's wrath, he saw all these things, and now John has shown you know, the good and the reward that awaits each and every believer. There's a saying that we save the best to last. Well, that is what God does here. He saves the best to last. And he, he says, he, John says he saw a new heaven and a new earth come down, the only city of Jerusalem. And this is the place where our real citizenship is. This is the place where we really belong. 700 years before this, there's a prophet called Isaiah. And God spoke through this prophet and he said the same thing. He said, for I will create a new heaven and a new earth and the past events will not be remembered or come to mind. That God one day, this is really going to happen. God is going to create a new heaven and a new earth. And this old earth, this old heaven and the old things will not be remembered no more. Jesus said, heaven and earth will pass away. It will pass away. This heaven, this earth will pass away. In 2 Peter it says this. I'm going to read this. In 2 Peter chapter 3, you can turn to it if you want. 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 10. He says, But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will disappear with a roar. The elements will be destroyed by fire. And the earth and everything done in it will be laid bare. Since everything will be destroyed in this way, what kind of people ought you to be? You ought to live holy and godly lives. As you look forward to the day of God and the speed of his coming. That day will bring about destruction of the heavens by fire and the elements will melt in the heat. But in keeping with his promise, listen to this bit. We are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth where righteousness dwells. You know this morning, that is where we are to be looking this morning. To a new heaven and a new earth. This is a promise from God. But I ask a question this morning. To myself and to each and every one of us this morning. How many of us is looking forward to that day? How many of us truly within our hearts are looking forward to that day? How many of us are thinking of that day? Longing for his coming. You know in the Bible when you look from the Old and the New Testament. All the people throughout there. This is where they were looking for the new heaven and new earth. Every one of them had their eyes fixed upon it. They were longing for that day. More importantly, who's ready for that day? You know, here in Peter, he said, as we know that day is coming, that we ought to live holy and godly lives. That's the type of people we ought to be, that we see the speed of his coming. We only have to look around. We only have to go out them doors and we can see the, the speed of the coming of the Lord, how soon it is. But there's going to be a day where this city is going to be without sin and death. And Zachariah says it's where the boys and girls will play in the streets. We can't compare what this place is going to be like. A city that comes down out of heaven, the Bible says. See, when this history, history of this time ends, that's when eternity is going to begin forever with God. 
The Bible tells us in Colossians that the only reason that this world is old, old together is through Christ. He's the only one holding this world together. He's the only one allowing <coughs> what's going on at this minute that God is in control and he's holding it. But you know what? There's going to come a time where God is going to let go. And I believe that time is very soon. Very soon that God is going to let go, amen. And this heaven and earth is going to pass away. In verse 2 he says, of Revelation, let me turn back to it. He says, he saw the only city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 61, it speaks of how the bride in the last day will adore herself with her jewels. And you know, I watched there something the other day, and this man said, he said, the most beautiful thing that a man sees is his bride on his wedding day. To him, there's nothing else like his wife. There's nothing more on the beautiful than his wife when he's there on his wedding day. And he said, it's a picture of how we will look at the new heaven and new earth. That there'll be nothing more, no more beautiful than it. And I was looking at a bride. I was just looking in, you know, there's, there's many women in here that's married, you know, and a bride on a wedding day, she wants to look nice. She wants to look nice, she wants to, she wants to do her best, she wants to, she wants to look nice, she makes the effort because it's a big day. And it made me realise, you know, just as a bride does that physically, and we are the bride as a church, how much more of an effort do we need to make? How much more do we need to, you know, want to be our best for our big day? Because we have a big day that's coming in. We have a big day when the bride, the church, is going gonna, is gonna to be with the Lord. Yes, amen. And the Bible says, when that happens, we return to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And we're going to be in very good company, amen. In verse 3, he says this in verse 3. And I hear a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people, and he will dwell with them. For they will be his people, and God himself will be their God. You know, in some translations, it'll say tabernacle. Or dwelling. That God's dwelling place will be among his people. It has always been. In the word of God when we read it. It's always been God's desire. To have that close fellowship with his people. Always. When God created Adam and Eve. And he put them in the garden. You know the Bible says that. Man and uh, woman they walk with God in the cool of the day. God was there with them. But we all know the story. What happened. Sin come in. And then we see God set up the tabernacle. A place where God would dwell. We all know about the tabernacle, the temple will be set up. And then in the time of Solomon, there was a temple built. And what was known as the Shekinah glory, where God would dwell in this place. But within the temple, there was, there was various courts, there were separations, there were sacrifices. And all what these things only done, is they placed a distance between a holy God and a sinful man. That is all they've done. They never brought us closer. They placed a distance. Which we see ultimately. God would send his son. To come into this world. We see God would send his son. Emmanuel. God with us. God would come to this earth. He would come with us. And man would see his glory. The miracles and the things that God would do. And then he would go to the cross. And through the cross. There's no longer, he's done away with the veils, the sacrifices, the separations, the temples. And the Bible says that God now dwells in here. Amen. But there's going to come a day when God is not only going to dwell here, but he's going to dwell with us. He's going to dwell in his presence, he's going to be with us. That he will dwell with us, we will be in the very presence of God. Because of what Jesus has done on the cross. That one day we will see God face to face. One day we will be stood next to Jesus, one day. One day we will be stood in the presence and we will be able to look at God. In the book of Leviticus, he said, I would place my residence among you. And Ezekiel, Ezekiel said the same words that John says here. Ezekiel said, my dwelling place will be with them and I will be their God and they will be my people. The same thing that John writes here, that one day, very soon, we will be with God in his dwelling place. The Bible says that there'll be no more seas. And I looked at this point, I thought, why would there be no more seas? What the seas do is they separate people. You know, the Jews would look at the sea as something evil. But you know, in the new heaven and new earth, there's going to be no evil. There's going to be no separation. 
There's going to be no laws. There's going to be no temples. There's going to be none of this. Just me and you and God forever and ever. Dwelling in his presence. You know, so many times we can pray and we can worship the Lord. And when you're worshiping the Lord and you feel the presence of God and it's nice. Imagine what that's going to be like when God's there dwelling with you. It says, and God himself will be with them and be their God. You know, in the book of Hebrews, it speaks of great men and great women who had great faith. And every one of them, they was looking forward. They was all looking ahead to something. In Hebrews 11, it says this. Instead, they was looking for a better country, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their people, for he has prepared a city for them. You know, God has prepared a place for me and you. Who believes that this morning? You know, he said that I've gone away to prepare a place for you, a mansion of many rooms. And where I have gone, I will take you to be. That one day God is going to make a new heaven and a new earth. And we need to get this out of our mind. It's not going to be in the clouds. It's not going to be a set of little pearly gates and all white. But it's going to be a new heaven, a new earth. That's what God is going to make. Abram knew, when you read in the Hebrews, Abram knew something. That this was not his real home. The old time that Abram lived upon here, the Bible says, for he was looking for the city and whose builder and foundation was God. That's where Abram was looking. Abram knew that he didn't belong to this world when you read in the book of Hebrews. And you know this morning, neither do we. None of us belong to this world. You know, Abram, when you look at him, he would pitch from place to place in a tent. He would just move from place to place in a tent. He never made his own upon this earth because he knew and he, would, he knew where he belonged. He was looking to his reward. He knew where his true home was. Do we know where our true home is this morning? Do we know where we truly belong this morning? I believe so many people today, and including myself sometimes, we can be too focused on building upon this foundation, here and now. Too busy building here, chasing after the treasures of this world. And I believe, look, so including myself in this, that we can lose sight of our true home. We can lose sight of where we really belong. We can lose sight of what's ahead. We can get distracted. And the Bible says, you know, where your treasure is, there your heart will go. That's where it will lead us to him. But we need to remember Moses. In the very same chapter in Hebrews, it says he regarded disgrace for the sake of Christ. Was of greater value than the treasure of Egypt. Why did he do that? Why did he, why did he regard disgrace for the sake of Christ when he could have had all the treasures of Egypt? The Bible says because he was looking ahead to his reward. He knew something was far better. And you know this morning, all of the treasures of this world cannot compare to what God has in store for us. It can't compare the most beautiful places in this world, the most beautiful places, the holidays, the places where we can go, the things that you can look at, cannot compare to what this new heaven and earth is going to be like. All the materialistic things cannot compare. Solomon had all these things. And what did Solomon say? It is meaningless. Meaningless, it meant nothing. Solomon knew what really mattered. Everything in this world... As we've just read in Peter, and, and, and as we can see here, everything in this world is perishing. Everything is going to be destroyed. It's waxing away, everything. And you know, the sooner that me and you realise this, the better. That we realise what is going to happen. That's why in the Bible we're told to store up our treasures in heaven, aren't we? Not on earth, but in heaven. To set our minds on where? On things above, not on things of the same. To seek what first? To seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. Seek first the kingdom of God. To seek first our citizenship is in heaven this morning. That's where we truly belong. In heaven. Heaven is our own. And Christ must become greater than any of the treasures of this world. Than anything in this world. When we must be willing to understand that this morning. To know that. That nothing can compare to what God has in store for me and you this morning. Like Moses did with the treasures of Egypt. He knew that all that treasures, all them things, couldn't compare to what his reward was in the end. We must know where our home is. Like Abram. Now, Abram knew where his true home was. And all these people, they had their minds. Even when you read all the way through the Bible, they had their minds set on one thing. They all wanted to be in the very presence of God. They wanted to be in this place, in this dwelling place where they would be with God forever. And that's all that mattered to them. 
And the truth is, that's all that ma should matter to me and you this morning. Amen. That's all that should matter. But I believe this today. And I see it so much. And I'm guilty and I'm not pointing the finger at anyone. But today we can have our minds set upon the wrong things. We can be looking to the wrong thing. This life right now. What we can get now and here. Instead of thinking about where we're going. And what we're going to get in the future. And the reward that we're going to have. And I believe so many times we lose sight. Of where our true home is. We lose sight of the reward. Where our minds should be set. The treasures that we should be storing up. And I tell you what begins to happen when we lose sight of this. We begin to neglect the things of God. That's what happens. When I'm no longer looking towards the future and my reward. And I focus more upon this world. I lose sight of the things of God. I neglect the things of God. Be time for God. Serving God. Even coming to church. Bearing fruit for God. Remember the parable of the sower this morning. The, the, the seed that grew with the thorns. And, and, and it choked the plant this morning. Remember that. As Bridget shared to Rick about the spider web this morning. Remember things can you know, choke us. And then, you know, no matter what we do. No matter what we do for the Lord. You know, you can go and serve the Lord and do loads of great things for the Lord. When you stand before him. You still wish you would have done more. You know, no matter what you've done, you will stand before God one day and think, I wish I would have done more. But, you know, if we are trying to save the Lord and we're trying to do things for the Lord, at least the Lord can see that we're making a heifer. Yeah. That we're trying. Like all these people in the Bible wasn't perfect and had faults, but they were trying. They were striving towards the citizenship in heaven. And the Bible says whoever can be trusted with very little can be trusted with much more. But imagine this morning, brothers and sisters, standing before the Lord, this morning, right? And we stand before the Lord and we've done nothing for him. Because we was too busy, focused upon this world, the treasures of this world. And, and we become too busy for the things of God. But then when we stood before God and we stood there and we've got nothing to show, we've done nothing. Not saying we work for our salvation, we're well aware of that this morning. But bearing fruit and doing things for the Lord. And then to look and think... It was all that chasing, all that running, all what I was doing. Just like Solomon said, it was meaningless. Yeah. To finally stand before the Lord and think, all the running and chasing after this and after that and doing this and doing that. I'm stood here. And what was it all for? It was meaningless. That's right. Paul said this, and I think Paul said it well. He said, we do not focus on what is seen, but on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Yeah. And what we need to focus on is the things that is unseen. The things that are eternal this morning. That's what I need to focus on this morning. And I believe that God wants to remind us this morning of the promise. The promise this morning. You know, where we need to focus on the unseen. Focus on the eternal things. Where our home really is. Where we really belong. And where life really starts. And it never ends here. Life doesn't start on this earth. Life starts when we're in the glory of God. And it never ends, amen. In verse 4 it says this. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. And there will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain. For the older things has passed away. You know in this world. In this world we will all suffer pain. We will all suffer probably persecution. Hard times. Some different than others. But we'll all face these things. You know, heartache, sorrow, tears. And we know that Jesus never promised us in the Bible that we'd have an easy life upon this earth. We're all aware of that. You know, he said to, that you'll have trials and tribulations in this world, but take our eye of overcoming. But we will have times where there will be tears. We will have times where there will be sad times. But you know, in heaven, there's going to be no more tears this morning. There's going to be no more tears. You know, that encourages me when I read it this morning. That there'll be no more tears. God is going to wipe away every tear. There'll be nothing else to cry about. There'll be no more sorrow. There'll be no more heartache. No more stress. No more worries. No more agony. But all of this will be gone forever. No more death. No more mourning. No more crying. No more pain. Death will be no more. Everything that happened in Genesis 3, God will reverse everything. The last enemy, death. As Paul said, will be destroyed. Death and Hades, you read in the chapter before, are thrown into the lake of fire. 
Why? Because the older things have passed away. The old heaven, the old earth will be destroyed. Life as we know will be completely changed. We will be given a new body, a new life. Why? Why is all this possible this morning? How can we have all this this morning? Because the Lamb of God has conquered. Because of what Jesus has done on the cross this morning. That we can have this. Through the cross, through what Jesus has done for me and you this morning. And the Bible says to all those who believe, they have this hope, this future, and they have this inheritance. This is what is waiting for us all this morning. And I look and think, if it was worth what Jesus done on the cross, that he chose to go to a cross like this, he chose to suffer the pain, he chose to suffer the agony, to go through all this, for me and you one day to go to this place. So me and you can go to this new heaven and new earth. You know what it shows me? That no matter what I go through, no matter what I face this, this morning, no matter what I go through in life, it's going to be worth it. It's going to be worth it. <coughs> Paul said this. He said, I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth, worth comparing to the glory that will be revealed in Amen. Paul noticed all the things that he went through. You read in, I think it's 1 Corinthians 10 or 11 or 2 Corinthians, where it speaks about all the things that Paul went through. Paul went through a lot of things, but he realised that it couldn't compare to what was coming. Yeah. His suffering, it couldn't con- consider to the present suffering he was comparing to the glory that will be revealed in him. But the day is coming, brothers and sisters, very soon. Very soon, I believe, with all my heart. That day will come where there will be no more tears, no more suffering, death or sorrow. Heartache, no more hospitals, no more hunger or thirst that we see in the world today. No more sickness, all of it will be gone. And all things will be made new. The Bible says, he who is seated on the throne is making all things new. All things new. You know, 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, For the old has gone, the new has come, we're new creations. God is making new men and new women to go into that new heaven and new earth. He is making new men and new women one day to inherit this, this new heaven and this new earth. He goes on to say this further down. He said, write down these words, for they are trustworthy. And I believe at this moment, when John is seeing all these things, John is in amazement. John has seen all the things that, that's took place up to this point. But I believe when John is shown this, he just can't fully grasp hold of the splendour and the glory that he's seen. He can't, he can't grab hold of just what he's seen. And the angel says to him, write down these words, for they are trustworthy. God does not lie this morning. He is truthful in them. Amen. His words is trustworthy this yes. morning, isn't yeah. it? Amen. We can trust in God. We can trust in God's promise. Yeah. And this morning we can take rest. We can take assurance. We can take comfort as the children of God and be encouraged that that day is coming that I'm speaking about very soon. And we have to look forward to it. Yeah. Sure. We have to look forward to it this morning. That one day we will inherit all this and be in glory with God forever. No more problems. No more agony. No more. As Peter says, it's an inheritance that is reserved for me and you that will never fade, spoil or perish. Reserved by God. Thank you, Lord. Amen. And he said, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. He is the originator and creator of all things. God is in control of all things from the beginning to the end. Do you believe that this morning? Yes, God is in full Amen. control. No matter what's going to happen in this world, no matter all the disaster, no matter all the bad things that's going to happen, one day, this is our promise. In verse 6, he says, To the thirsty I give water without cost from the spring of the water of life. In Isaiah, Isaiah also said this, that all who were thirsty come to me. This is what God said. And you know, something we need to understand this morning, that we have to be people who thirst for God. Thirsting for God. You know, I looked at water represents life. Jesus' life this morning. You know, we need water. We need Jesus this morning. We need these things this morning. But we need to thirst for God. We need to thirst for him. John chapter 4, when you see the Samaritan woman, what she say? Say, give me some of this water. Do we need that water this morning? Do we need, have, have we lost that thirst this morning? And we need that water this morning. Because his grace saves and satisfies thirsty souls this morning. 
God can satisfy that first this morning. Yes, he's trying. But the question is, are we thirsting after the things of God? Do we thirst for the word? Do we thirst to pray? Do we thirst for this new heaven and this new earth? The Bible says this in the book of Matthew. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, Amen. for they shall be filled in. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Jesus said to the Jews when he was in the temple, he said, if anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Maybe this morning some of us in here and we need to come to the Lord. Maybe some of us do need that living water this morning. Yay! I'm not going to keep you so much longer. He said, he who is victorious will inherit all this and I will be their God and they will be my children. Do you know when I was looking at this, if you look in Revelation when he speaks to the seven churches, to each church he tells them, to each church, he said, that would be victorious or overcome, would inherit something. And this is what he said to each church. To the one who is victorious, I will give the right to eat from the tree of life, the right to sit on his throne. He will give them authority over all nations. He will dress them in white. They will not be hurt by the second death. Will be given a new name. He will never blot their name out of the book of life will make them a pillar in his temple and never again will they leave it. And he said, to those who are victorious, I will write the name of my God on them. The name of the city and the new Jerusalem, which is coming down out of heaven from my God. You know, this morning, brothers and sisters, we have to live in victory. Yeah. We're not to live in defeat this morning. Jim said the other night when he preached his message, you know, miserable Christians, we're not to be miserable this morning. Look what we have to look forward to. Yeah. Look at our reward. Look at the, the, the place that God has prepared for us. But you know, sadly, it's not going to be a day of victory for everyone, is it? We know that. It's not going to be. Verse 8 tells us there's a place where unbelievers are going to go. The second death. The lake of fire where people will go for eternity. Even more so, we need to be praying for our families, Amen. our friends. Because yes. this place is real. Yes. And this is the place that awaits those who didn't thirst for God. Those who rejected salvation. It's not our outcome this morning. Our outcome, God willing, all of us in here are looking towards a new heaven and a new earth. A place where we will dwell with God forever. And this morning, God wants us to take comfort in that. God wants us to take rest in that. To be assured of that this morning. To be encouraged this morning. To know where you are going. Where you belong. We may suffer on this earth. Each and every one of us, we may suffer, we may go through hard times, we may suffer sickness, tears, all these things. But like, like I said, like Paul said, it's not worth comparing to the future glory that's going to be revealed in us. And you know, brothers and sisters, no matter what we face today, no matter what we go through, because we all go through life in here, we're all, we all go through different problems. No matter what you're facing or what you're going through, God wants you to take rest and comfort in the reward that awaits you. Amen. To know nothing you know, can compare to this place, that it's all going to be worth it, that whatever we face, you see the disciples throughout the Bible, they all died and was martyred for Christ. Why? Because they knew where they were going. They knew where they were going this morning. And that's our hope this morning. That's our future this morning. And I believe this this morning, that God is saying to us, don't lose sight of this. Don't lose sight of where you belong. I know it's hard for, our, it's hard for my little brain to think, of, of, of this place that God is speaking about. Yeah. But don't lose sight of it this morning. It's real. And if you really believe in faith. And you really believe in God. And you call yourself a believer this morning. Then you have to really believe in this place. That God has prepared for me and you. Where there's going to be no more of these tears. There's going to be no more agony. What a place. What a day it's going to be. But till then we're not to let this, this world. And, and the pleasures of this world. You know distract us. Not to allow the enemy to have a foothold. The Bible says in the last days that Satan is filled with fury and he's going to come to this earth. But the Bible says this, that we have trumpired over the enemy by the blood of the Lamb. We are those who are washed in the blood of the Lamb this morning. In the last words, he finished in the Bible. I'm going to finish with these. He said, look, I am coming soon and will reward each one according to what they have done. 
Blessed are those who wash their robes and enter into the city. 2,000 years ago, Jesus said that. And it was soon then. How much sooner is it now? How much sooner now is it to the return of the Lord? And the Bible says when he comes back, he's going to reward each and every one of us according to what we've done. And he says, blessed are those who walk through the gates, who wash their robes. You know, this morning, if you're a child of God in here, you are blessed. You are blessed this morning. And I don't know about you this morning, but I know one thing. I want to walk through them gates. That it speaks about in the book of Revelations. I want to be one of them people who walk through them gates and walk into that place where I will dwell with God forever and ever and ever. That's the day that I long for. That's the day that I hope. Because we can see that Jesus is coming very soon, can't we? We see the signs, we see the times, you know. Then we know what we need to do this morning. I know what I need to do. We need to be like that bride. We need to be making our best effort. Looking our best, doing our best for that day, for our big day when the Lord comes. Where we're going to dwell with the Lord for glory and glory and glory forever and ever. And not to lose sight of that this morning. Not to lose sight of where we belong. And to know this morning, no matter what we face, what we go through, it's going to be worth it in the end. Amen. It's going to be worth it. And to know this this morning, nothing can compare to this. Nothing in this world can compare to the new heaven and new earth this morning. Let's bow our heads this morning.